Hey everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the weather company as they have just dropped their hurricane season forecast here. And with this hurricane forecast, just like with University of Colorado State and also AccuWeather, very much above average season here. Very alarming numbers at that too, because we're looking at these numbers here to the right this is our average 14 named storms seven hurricanes three major hurricanes this is our average we look over to the left here and some big time numbers 24 named storms 11 hurricanes and six of which that could make it to category three strength or higher this coincides pretty well with what we have going on with the AccuWeather forecast. Pretty much a similar deal. We talked about this in the last update video for hurricane season. We have 20 to 25 named storms, 8 to 12 hurricanes, 4 to 7 major hurricanes. But there's a couple of things that I've noticed here that I didn't maybe mention quite as much with the AccuWeather forecast. It's direct U.S. impacts. Truthfully, I'm not a fan of this because I don't. I don't really want to spread panic. I'm not really into that whole thing. I'm not really into the super clickbaity stuff, but I do find it interesting that they are at least thinking four to six U.S. impacts. Now, keep in mind, this does not determine the strength of the storm or anything of the like, but definitely something that we still want to pay attention to. There are a few things that I do notice that kind of remind me of particular years, maybe 2011, 1, 2020 even though the analogs for that aren't officially out but we'll get into that a little bit later also another thing that i didn't see with the weather company's forecast which i would love to see more in the future is the accumulated cyclone energy i kind of liken this similar to what cape is for a thunderstorm convective available potential energy so basically you would think of this accumulated cyclone energy or ace as a fuel source for tropical systems here and the higher the number the more energy there is available. Our average is 123, and our forecasted amount is between 175 and 225. When we get to the University of Colorado State, it's a little bit more concise as to the number they have. They're particularly mentioning 210. And then there's a particular point that we look for. The accumulated cyclone energy west of the 60 degree west line. So this is getting much closer to land, getting over towards the Caribbean here. We have an average usually of 73. We're at 125. So like I said, a lot of energy out there, a lot of energy expected to be available as we head into hurricane season. Now, there already are some signals that I've noticed here in particular that are going to help aid that and kind of re uh, reinforce that forecast here. For one we've transitioned all the way from the start of the year seeing a strong el nino all the way to a weak la nina so this has a lot to do with the sea surface temperatures over towards the pacific and this does very much affect the atlantic in a lot of ways this has been affecting our severe weather we've had a very active year so far because of this abrupt transition and this is undoubtedly going to play a part in hurricane season that along with much warmer ocean temperatures if you want to get more details as to how El Nino affects that, check the top right corner where we talk about the effects that El Nino has and just how El Nino itself works. But as we continue to move forward here, looking at the sea surface temperatures as of right now, one thing to make note of is the fact that we already are dealing with above average temperatures over a good chunk of the Atlantic already definitely much warmer than expected there's a there's a few cool pockets here or there which is to be expected for this time of year but for one area in particular that's kind of captured my eye here or a couple of areas is the caribbean and the gulf we're seeing increasing amounts over time where we're seeing those above average temperatures it started out as a couple of small pockets but it's been consistently growing over the last couple of months here we're going to continue to see that and you can even start to see the main development region even starting to warm up here. There's still a little cool pocket right here, but I don't expect this to last much longer, especially as we get into the month of May. 
Could we have an early start to hurricane season? Right now, the jury's still out on that, but definitely seeing some signals here of the times that could be ahead here. Again, I'm not really one that's into fear mongering or overhyping, but definitely would be lying if I had said I didn't see any signals that could confirm a more active season. The same thing can even be said for the current sea surface temperatures right now. And the thing to understand with this, because this map is labeled in Celsius, the number that you're looking for, the threshold number for tropical development is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be in translation about 26, 27 degrees Celsius. Now, we're just south of the main development region here. We're getting towards 30 already. This is right towards the equator. Not a surprise to see the waters a little bit warmer over here. But over towards the Caribbean, we're at 28. We're getting close to that 90 degree threshold there. So that's a sign of things to come. And you can even start to see a little bit of a nose here begin to pop up into the Gulf of Mexico right between the Strait and between the Yucatan and Cuba. So that in itself is also a sign of potential things to come. And even then, we're still right at that threshold now, just about at 26 degrees Celsius. So we're already where we need to be. Big question in the future is going to really be more or less the wind pattern. And if we go ahead and look also at our analogs here, there's some interesting years that have kind of caught my eye in particular. 1999, 2007, and 2010 and 2011. A lot of us remember 2011, but also another year that isn't mentioned on here kind of captures my eye a little bit, and that is actually 2020. Here's a look at that 2020 hurricane season. Look at how active it was. It was a record-breaking year. So much activity, and a lot of it formed over that area that we just talked about around the Caribbean here. I do have my concerns, and like I said, a lot of this is going to be hugely reliant on the wind pattern here, but I do think that there is potential for a similar situation to maybe go down just like this. Like I said, wind pattern is going to be everything, but our sea surface temperatures are pretty much already in place. We aren't going to really get a good indicator of what the wind pattern is going to be like because it's ironic that people compare hurricanes to tornadoes. But the thing to make note of here is actually with hurricanes, you don't want much wind shear. You want very little, maybe just a little bit to help the storm breathe, kind of keep the clouds out of the eye sometimes. But whereas with tornadoes where you want incredibly strong wind shear at times, it's the opposite. So depending on how our low and high pressure set up across this region here will determine a lot. If we have subtle wind shear here, we could see development in any one of these regions similar to this. But in particular, like I said, over here towards the Caribbean, right around this strait here, I'm increasingly concerned about the potential for the most activity being here. And then also the 60 degree line. I can't remember it exactly by heart right now, but it would be right around, I would say, I think it's this line here. Quote, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, don't quote me on it, but I think the 60 degree line, the 60 degree west line is here. But fact in the matter is 2020 in particular had a lot of activity over here. And if you remember, and we'll go back, the accumulated cyclone energy west of the 60 degree west line is above average here. So again, this is your wake up call here. If you're in the Caribbean, if you happen to be watching this video, if you're over towards the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico here, towards southern Mexico, heading towards the countries towards Panama, also the Gulf Coast states, East Coast, Florida, of course, we're going to talk about you. You need to get ready. Pay attention. Not going to overhype it and say this is a guarantee of what we could see, of what we're going to see here, but it's possible. And the best way to be prepared is to get a head start. I'm pretty sure that right now supplies will be discounted. And if you stay ready, you don't have to be ready. That's the saying. But anyhow, though, that's pretty much all I got for this video here. Just want you guys to stay on top of the game here. With that being said, I'm going to see you guys later. 
we'll have the April outlook coming soon and we'll continue to kind of stack on the videos from that point. Also be in mind, severe weather season is still ongoing. With that being said, you guys have a good rest of your day. Tired Middlehead Weatherman out.